Hey everybody, this is Edwin and I am with Henry Grigion from New York and he and we are live in New York. Uh, Henry, what's going on and who are you set up to speak with? How you doing Edwin, how you doing? Thank you again. Um, right now I'm not set to speak but I'm trying to get the attention of a gentleman who is a city councilman, highly controversial here in New York and he's also running for the 15th Congressional District in the Bronx here, also an area that's highly controversial, but also it's an area that's one of the highest uh, poverty in the state. Uh -huh. So right now, um, he knows me. I said hello to him before he went on. He's with Channel 41 on Navy Young. I am a small person. I'm a small fish, but uh, I'm going to see if I can get a few words. We're not guaranteed, but I'm going to try to see if he can speak a little bit and see what we can do to ask him some tough questions, because right now he's doing like a photo op. And as you can see behind me, that's exactly what he's doing. Okay, great. And so, uh, can you describe uh, what the feeling and atmosphere of where you're at? I'm assuming you are in New York City? Yes, sir. I'm in Fordham Road where the whole rioting uh, took place. The atmosphere is, is that I've seen two incidents while I was out here. One time when we were live of a gentleman who uh, started arguing with another person and actually started fighting with the police in front of me and started cursing at them, saying he was going to uh, do things like bodily harm, something that was never done before. If somebody was to make a threat to somebody, it uh -huh. would be considered a threat or to a police officer. But right now, that's what we're facing right now, this high tension in the streets um, and we, all the rioting and everything that's happening. It's really, I'm so afraid right now. Last night, uh, we were discussing this in our last program that two police officers were injured. One, he was run down by a car. And I have that video and the person hit him he flew in the air, hit another vehicle, and he's in critical condition. He's expected to live, but he's in very bad shape. Another right. police officer was attacked. They threw a garbage can at him. They were beating him down, three people. I'm afraid that after uh, what was happening here in New York, we had two police officers back in uh, 2014 that died execution style. Officer Lou, Officer Ramos, they executed them in their vehicle in Brooklyn. And then another officer, uh, Officer Familia, 15 minutes from where I live at here in my area, that person was, that woman was executed, execution style while she was sitting in an RMP. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, so in terms of last night, uh, are, are you in harm's way? And have you seen, um, have you seen any, any weird stuff uh, happening? Unusual. Uh, I'm not, thank you. I'm not in harm's way directly. Um, where I live at is about 15 minutes from here. Um, I did see a, a, a group of groups of young people at three or four o'clock in the morning running up and down the streets. I don't think that I'm in danger on my neighbors that because we live in buildings. We're not in houses like some people that have glasses on their house. Uh -huh. They would literally have to come in the building through the front door, which is secure. And the doors are pretty tough. So we should be OK uh, during the night. My fear is, is that tonight, if they do not send the National Guard here uh, right now, it's going to get out of control. and. Uh, the, PD, the NYPD is too much for them to handle, but we saw that as last night. They were not able to handle it, and I think 50% of the businesses were broken into, uh -huh. and it's just horrible to see. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, have you had any discussions with uh, any of your neighbors uh, about if they know any of the looters and the uh, rioters? Um, you know, and even, even do they even know uh, some of the protesters who are peacefully protesting just to get their... Uh, their message out what what have you talked to anybody any of the neighbors that i spoke to they do know some young people that are protesting they're not saying that they are uh that they know any looters or rioters that's obvious they're uh -huh. not going to say it if they do but right. yeah they do know young people i don't know them directly any young people that are protesting uh -huh. but um i was trying to get one young person that i know just to speak on camera and she's a little bit shy uh -huh. she's in the area right now but no uh, neighbors that I know, they do not know people directly that are rioters, but they do know people that are protesters. And some of them are uh, peacefully protesting the young people. Uh -huh. and do you think because of all this violence and, uh, you know, because everything that's going on, uh, do you think their message is actually, you know, getting across or is it getting diluted or is it even changing? You know, is, 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 is it the message that they want, the message that's actually uh, you know, it, it, what's, what's going on with messaging? 
it's not good because the message is, is that everybody, between young people, everybody that are protesting, exercising their First Amendment freedom of speech, uh-huh. it starts off good as protesting. And then yeah. the same protesters, that's what they call them, the agitators. They are agitators, the professional ones that are going in and they're getting the crowd. The crowd is already, the protesters are already emotional. They're already right. anger. The anger, you can see it in, in, the, in the folks, in their faces and their voices. And they are agitators that are getting the same peaceful protesters to get them sparked up and tell right. them that the government is wrong, the police are wrong. And that's where we have our problem because we don't have the proper leadership to say that there's two sides to the story. They have good cops and they have cops that are, have to be investigated like the one that murdered uh, uh, George Floyd. Right, right, right. And, you know, and we'd love to you know, keep discussing about George Floyd, but you know, that seems like yesterday's news. That, that doesn't seem like that's uh, the immediate, uh, it doesn't sound like it's the immediate uh, you know, discussion part right now. It just seems like you know, what happened to George uh, Floyd is taking a backseat to what, uh, what we should be talking about and we should be kind of be talking about violence. Uh, you know, and you know, and is it, is it even appropriate to even talk about racial issues right now, which you know, uh, you know, we should respect everybody, but right now I'm kind of worried, do we have to protect our homes? Do we have to protect, you know, our families? Do we have to, uh, you know, fu- uh, you know, prepare for food uh, to last us, you know, I don't know how long until the stores get uh, restocked and, and rehab uh, to make it even, you know, shoppable. Uh, so uh, welcome Dr. Annette, uh, you know, Henry and I are discussing uh, you know, what's going on in New York, what's going on in, in LA and how people are taking the, uh, you know, the incident, incidences uh, to talk about messaging. You know, is, is the messaging about, you know, George Floyd or is the messaging about staying safe? Um, you know, what, 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 what are you seeing out there, uh, you know, in terms of what you feel? Are, are you feel, do you feel the racial tensions and the, uh, the way to fix, you know, all this vile, uh, all, the, all the racial tension is, is that taking a second, a backseat to, um, you know, preparing to, you know, survive. Uh, you know, what, what, what are you feeling is the most needed discussion? Well, I think that when when we're going through um, this kind of uh, turmoil. We've just been through. Um, the politicians never uh, want to stop talking, I guess. They, a lot of talking, not a lot of action. Right. Uh, but ultimately, we've just been through COVID-19. People were extremely um, concerned about being able to have enough food for their families, uh-huh. about being safe and not getting infected. And then we move to this mode, which is everybody's in chaos. There are protesters that are trying to say that their protests are uh, peaceful and that they want to get their message out. But again, uh, with the looting, the destruction of property, the destruction of everywhere that we purchase anything in our cities, it's going to be hard again for people to be able to live a normal life. It seems like America is moving from chaos to chaos and solutions are actually what, what's happening is we're kind of seeing that the people that we elect to office, the people that are supposed to be serving in leadership roles, are kind of just letting everybody have a free for all. Right, right, right. What, 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 what do you think about that, Henry? Uh, yeah, I agree with the doctor. I mean, right now, um, even the leadership here, the governor here in our state, uh, our mayor, also is they're not giving us what they need there's no leadership it's true what she says they're not talking so much about coronavirus anymore i mean you notice i mean i could just flip the camera around and i could show you uh dr net what do you think as a doctor where's the social distancing <laughs> look what there i'm showing you right now look at look at this you got people that okay you have some that are masked some don't most of them okay but there's no more social distance what happened what happened now all of a sudden when we don't have to worry about uh, the coronavirus it went away I don't know. What do you think? Kind of makes you think because uh, we're not we're not doing social distancing. We're not being extremely careful as to who we're standing next to, who we might have any kind of droplets, um, you know, across uh, uh, our barriers or whatever. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of handshaking, but you know, a lot of fist shaking also. 
kind of uh, contact. And, you know, the virus doesn't care. The virus doesn't care whether you shift somebody's hand or whether you slap somebody's face. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. So anyway, uh, so what, what is the status of uh, your, you in New York? Are you able to, to speak with uh, the uh, uh, congressional candidate? And can you describe who, the, who, who do we want to speak to right now? Who are you waiting to speak to? And what's his background? Okay. What's, his, what's, his, what's his perceived uh, uh, perception of what's going on? Okay, I'm trying to get him. Just remember, if I catch you off guard and say, okay, we're ready to get him. He just finished his interview. The guy is a city councilman. He's a chairman of, of the, the transportation committee in the city of New York, which is a powerful committee. And it actually handles the, uh, for the cab drivers. Last year, there was 10 suicides of the cab drivers. So right now he's in the middle of doing all this. And uh, right now, um, get ready, Edwin. There's a possibility I might go quick. He's walking okay. around, shaking hands. He's gonna, you're gonna hear him, and I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna try to squeeze my question in there in regards to uh, what does he think about the curfew? And you're gonna hear him, he's against it. And what does he think about the National Guard coming into this area after what happened? Because the NYPD is trying, but right now, we're not even sure that they're able to do that. So he's doing what he, he knows me, and I say, he's giving me a chance, and I grab him, and you can continue talking. This guy, uh, again, he's, a, he's a 10 years in city council. He's uh -huh. a chairman of a powerful committee. And he's running for the 15th Congressional District. He's a progressive. Uh, he does not like Donald Trump. He does not like the Republicans. He is blaming, earlier he was on uh, uh, some stations and he was saying that he's blaming Trump. He's blaming uh, just everything. You can just imagine what, he's a progressive. So that's what it is. So um, it's interesting. So I'm almost, if you want to uh, continue, but I'm, I'm about to grab him. He's right about, he's about six feet away from him. Okay, uh, you know, while we're waiting for, uh, for that to happen, uh, Dr. Annette, um, with all the hate that's going on, uh, that's spilling over to hating of the police. And last night, uh, unfortunately, uh, the law enforcement officers uh, have, uh, you know, had, some really, had a really bad night last night. Can you, want, can you describe what, uh, you know, what, when, what went on and, you know, what can we do to stop all this stuff? Well, ultimately, I mean, we want everybody to be accountable. Um, when people are throwing things like bottles and things at people, um, anybody can get hurt, not just the police officers. So uh -huh. even regular protesters can get caught in, in the crossfire, so to speak. Right. Uh, for this particular police officer, it's obvious that the person that had the weapon and discharged his weapon um, had it out for the police officer who was trying to perhaps subdue a crowd that had gotten out of hand. And uh -huh. when these things happen, uh, psychologically, nobody's safe. Right, right. Yeah, you know, um, it's funny. A lot of, uh, you know, my leftist, uh, liberal, progressive friends, you know, they are saying that, uh, you know, this needs to happen. Edwin, sorry, get ready, get ready, almost. Okay. Okay. And don't, don't mute me yet. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so a lot, a lot of my, my friends are saying this has to happen. You know, this, 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 this disruption, uh, you know, although. Term, and here quick, we go. quick, quick. We'll talk to you, okay. Uh, we got, Dr. we got city councilman, Idani Rodriguez, the 15th congressional uh, district is running for Congress. How are you doing? Tell me what's going on. And real quick, I wanted to ask you, I heard you before you are against the curfew and you are against, I'm assuming the national guard coming here after what happened in, in Florida. What is your take on it? Well, first of all, being arrested more than 50 times in New, York, in New York City. My first experience being arrested in 1989, when I was told to leave the block by using, when I was using my Fourth Amendment right of freedom of speech. I have been committed to not only be part of the movement to support justice for George Floyd, but I also believe that we need to focus on anti-poverty initiatives. So I put my, my statement loud and clear. I call for the mayor of New York, for the governor, to start the curfew. I don't think that we need a curfew, but we need to do to, to be sure that whoever has infiltrated the movement step out. And I don't think that whoever got involved in the level of vandalism reflect what the movement is. This is an organized peaceful movement led by young people who especially demand justice for, for uh, George Floyd, but I also say this is more than George Floyd. This is our system that has been built over a 40 year or systematic racist society 
led by white male in this country. But we need to do it to be sure that immigrants, working class, middle class, New Yorker, black, Asian, Latino, all of us, we said the support that we need, especially on good quality education, affordable housing, good pay jobs, justice for George Floyd, but also support our community and the white leadership, Governor Cuomo, Consuelo de Napoli, Consuelo Stringer, Mayor de Blasio, you know, Speaker Johnson, use the white privilege that you have as leader of this nation to share those with the black and Asian community who deserve and Latino who deserve more of opportunity to see our children moving forward, getting good quality education, getting good paycheck. Let me ask you quick. So, but I'm saying I'm 35 years in this neighborhood. I'm Latino, Dominican. What do you think? Should we have what happened last night? Do you think we should have the National Guard? We should, because the, the police answer, are yeah. trying their best. So the, but, answer, the answer is no, not to the curfew, not to the National Guard. Yes to this movement. I've been there in the street in the past at two in the morning, protesting, being part of civil disobedience. I support the movement, not to the curfew, not to the National Guard. Okay, thank you. So guys, you saw that, that was uh, Idani Rodriguez running the 15th Congressional District. What do you think, guys? He did not answer my question. I was asking him again and again, should the National Guard come? Because I'm in this area, my neighborhood, 35 years besides being an investigative reporter, but also being of this neighborhood, being Latino, being Dominican American. And I got to tell you, if we do not get the NYPD who are doing a great job, guys, I got to tell you, the NYPD is doing a great job, but they were overrun with the two officers from last night. What do you think, Edwin? I didn't see him answer. He didn't want to answer it. Yeah, you know, it, it seems like he's, he wants a lot of disruption to keep going on. Uh, he seems very angry. Uh, you know, every, every, it's, you know, his response is, is all about race. You know, what happened to, uh, you know, love thy neighbor and what happened to, you know, respect? You know, it doesn't sound like, you know, he, it sounds like he just wants to get even at I don't know what. Give me a second before you go to Dr. Nett. And I got to tell you, after talking to the councilman, and you're seeing here, NYPD, they're doing a great job. It broke my heart to see how that car hit that, that officer last night. It breaks my heart to see that I'm from this neighborhood besides being a reporter, and to see the one officer that was beat down. What is the mayor doing? What is de Blasio doing? They need support. They're doing a great job. Look, I pointed the, their camera on them. They need support. They're doing a great job, and I'm not ashamed to say it that I, I support them. And I support also the movement, First Amendment, freedom of speech. Protesters are protesters, but not rioters. They're breaking the law. Guys, what do you think? Look at the great officers right now that I'm showing you. They're in danger right now. Tonight, they're expecting more riots. And you see that the governor and you see that the mayor is not sending the National Guard to help them out. What do you think? Well, as far as, as sending in the National Guard, the sending in the National Guard is to, to keep people safe, including our police force. Um, people can peacefully protest, even with the National Guard present. So if you don't want the National Guard present and you want to continue having looting and arson and having assaults on innocent police officers, then what are you promoting? Because you're not promoting America and you're not promoting law-abiding citizenship, and you're not promoting a Bill of Rights, you're just expecting a powder keg to have a spark go in it and an explosion to happen and let the chips fall where they may? That, that's, not, that's, not a, a, that's not justice. Um, that's not really uh, harboring a constitutional concept of a representative republic. I also heard from him that, you know, white privilege and the white privilege people should do this and do that. Our communities should stand together, unified, regardless of race, regardless of religion, and stand for what's right. And what's right is you can have a protest. Let it be peaceful. Get your word out. Explain what it is that, why you're angry. But don't take it out physically and do not take it out financially on businesses that are struggling anyway with this crisis. Right, I agree with you, I agree with you. Uh, so Henry, uh, what else What else is going on in your area? It sounds like, it sounds very busy. Well, it is busy right now. Like I said, the city councilman, he is uh, in another Kennedy, I believe it is. She's speaking right now. You know, they're turning it into a, a picture op. You see the people behind them? You have mm -hmm. people that are supporting. This here is right smack in the middle of the heart of Fordham Road, where all the riots happened last night. So about a block going uh, forward where I'm at, block behind me is where they broke stores, where they have, uh, I saw two banks, I have pictures of that, 
that they took the ATM and ripped it out of the wall and it took so many thousands of dollars. Uh, stores are boarding up as we speak. They have, or they already have boarded up. They're preparing for the worst. But you've seen the city councilman, you see the problem we have? They don't want to admit and say, look, the cops and more police because they're already stretched. They're already dealing with Manhattan. They're already dealing with Queens. And we're expecting the worst of the worst to happen tonight. And they're going to have more stores destroyed. On top of that, you have the coronavirus that actually shut down the booth. Still in shutdown. June 8th is the next date that the governor is going to look at to try to reopen. He's opening up in phases. The businesses are going under. People, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. This is like, I've never seen something like this. All right. Right. Well, my biggest concern is we have turned from completely uh, being at home and, and everybody needs to stay safe. And now what I'm hearing from your councilman is, okay, we're not going to talk about coronavirus. We're not going to talk about social distancing. We're not going to talk about mask wearing. We're not going to educate anybody about that. And by the way, I'm also going to ignore the businesses being burned and looted. And we're just going to talk about protesters and how white privilege has caused all this. It's not reality based. And, and this is not leadership. Leadership means that you have to take your pulpit and educate people and say, you know, protests are good as long as we stay law abiding. It's important that we have uh, people stay socially distant with each other. It's important that we not lose, that we not have people around us that are destroying property because that muddies the message and makes it impossible for us to get our message across. It's not a time going around and ignoring the fact that criminal behavior is a protest. Great, great. Well, I'm gonna go live with uh, with Facebook, and uh, so I'm gonna hit the button. I finally got it back up. So uh, give me a second. We're gonna go live on Facebook in five uh, about five seconds. So hopefully my computer will last long. But welcome everybody, and um, give us one minute to get uh, get going and set up with uh, with live on Facebook. If you are on live, uh, if you are watching this on Facebook, uh, please. Uh, like, share, comment, and we would love to hear your comments. Um, but here we are. We are live on Facebook. My name is Edward D. Turney. I'm with Dr. Annette Tejero, who is uh, live in Las Vegas, and Henry Brion, Brion uh, who is live in New York. We just uh, got uh, finished with a, uh, with a, uh, a video, a, a recorded uh, interview with a councilman. Uh, in New York, who's running for U.S. Congress, he does not appreciate uh, the military coming in to help out with uh, with the NYPD. Uh, Henry, how are you, and are you safe? Thank you. How are you doing, Edwin? Thank you. I am an investigative reporter out of New York here. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you and, and Dr. Nett. And right now, uh, as the it's five o'clock or four thirty for me. They have issued a curfew uh, at 8 p.m. And last night it was 11 p.m. But because of the rioting that happened, they uh, issued an 8 p.m. curfew until 6 a.m. here in New York, in, in my area. But right now, um, I'm behind me, you can see there's a big crowd and you have a couple of candidates. One of them was Idani Rodriguez, who's running uh, 15th Congressional District. He's a city councilman, 10 years, on a powerful committee called the Transportation Committee that deals with the cabbies that lost about 10 people last year when they committed suicide. It was a pressure pot then, guys. It's a pressure pot now. We're coming off of the epicenter here in New York and seeing so many people died. My own grandmother is positive with coronavirus and struggling in a hospital right now. She's 98 years old. But right now, New York, I don't know what happened. Uh, about a week ago, we were dealing with coronaviruses and you know dealing with it, and all of a sudden now they don't talk about it. And now we have people with the social distancing here. They were so strict with it. And now everybody is in crowds and doing all these protesting throughout the United States, especially here in New York. But um, we're expecting the worst here, guys. I mean, I already spoke to the councilman, asked him what he feels about the curfew. He's against it. He calls it a white privilege. He's on this kick. Uh, he's against the president. He said that it's the president's fault. He's, uh, he's against Republicans. And this is what I have to deal with here. He does not come up with a meaningful solution. You guys noticed I asked him twice. What does he think about the curfew? What does he think about the National Guard that we need it so bad? We're losing our business in my area. I think we're going to go tonight. It's going to be worse. Right. Dr. Annette, do you, you know, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, as we were listening to uh, the councilman speak about uh, 
you know, about what's going on in New York. You mentioned white privilege and how the curfew is white privilege. Uh, what, what is your opinion about uh, having a lockdown because of, the, uh, because of all the violence? Is that, is, you know, bringing the military to help support uh, the NYPD, is that white privilege? Well, I do not believe that our military or our uh, law enforcement is all white uh, composed. So that's uh, that's a bit. Yeah, yeah. It, I I I found it uh, you know quite alarming that he mentioned that the uh, the curfew was about white privilege. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of violence. And how could you say that this violence is, uh, you know, is white privilege? Uh, Henry, what, what, what's your take on, on the whole situation? Well, it's incredible that I have a lot of good white friends that um, are feeling pressured right now in regards to this white privilege. Um, I, I don't see it like that. I see it that, you know, a lot of uh, us, us minorities have had opportunities to come and in this country to be good. I mean, a lot of us are minorities of families that are immigrants. I was born here, but my family are from Dominican Republic. And you have to work for what you have to do. You have to go to school, you have to work hard. And the United States gives you that opportunity. And unfortunate, what's happening here in my area is that you know, a lot of the politicians are pushing for socialism. They're looking at that the people should not be working. They should not, they should get the assistance from the government. The government's obligated to, uh, you know, and that's what the unfortunate thing that I'm seeing in my community and it's, it's, you know, it's unfortunate. Right, right, right. So, um, you know, Dr. Nett, let's, I think at some point, you know, we've, we've all, we're all kind of bunk bunkering down. You know, I, I for one have, uh, you know, secured our home. We've bought food to last us, uh, you know, a few days. Should, you know, not, not, not because of, uh, you know, we're gonna get attacked or we feel like we're gonna get attacked, but if our local grocery stores get attacked, uh, it's going to take some time to restock and uh, rebuild the, uh, uh, you know, the grocery stores and so forth. Uh, but with that said, what can we do to, you know, stop the violence as well as what can we do to stop this movement that, uh, that we're all victims? You know, what, what do you think, what do you think we should do? Well, obviously we have to take care of our families first. Um, <clears throat> make sure that you do, that you have enough food and any other necessities that you have. Um, with everything that's happening, I would caution people to be very careful where they go. Um, daylight uh, usually stops some of this stuff, but I think the curfews are implemented because in the dark of night, uh, criminal activity does take over. We all know that. That's just the way that it is. Um, so staying fairly close to home, keeping your eyes open. Uh, for instance, if you see strange vehicles in your neighborhood or individuals that are following other individuals, things and situations that point to the potential of criminal behavior, um, those are things that you need to watch out for. Uh, keep in contact with local government so that they understand um, that, you're, that you're with them and the police force understands that you are answering um, their call uh, for good examples. Um, please, people, we must do this together. We cannot keep pushing um, the buttons and using the keywords of hate, um, pushing that this is a racial problem. No, this is an American problem. And our American problem is our cities are burning and people are using this as an excuse to do criminal behavior. All of us are in this together, we really are. So when and if you see anything strange or bizarre, please keep yourself safe, um, contact uh, leadership, hold them accountable. Um, for us, it's, it's been a bit disappointing because there are some people in leadership and they don't seem to be very vocal about how we can keep everybody safe. Yeah, uh, Henry, uh, you are a former NYPD. What is your take of what's going on with with the police? And if it's possible, could we get uh, could we get uh, you know some opinion of what the what your local law enforcement uh, want the public to do? Yes, uh, right now what we're looking at with the police 
is again, uh, last night they were struggling and you see how two officers were injured. And here on my area, uh, the stores that were, you know, that were vandalized. But uh, right now the police, they're trying their best to try. They have, right now in this area, they have police in every corner right now. And they have, they're trying to set up for tonight. So as much as they can prepare, they're a great unit. It's a great department, but they're right now facing another night of rioting. I don't think they're prepared for that, but you know, the, the, again, the mayor and the governor, especially the mayor, is not giving the sources that they need. And the National Guard is on, uh, on alert. They're here already. They came down from upstate New York and they're here ready to go, but they're not allowing them. So I gotta tell you, the police are well prepared. They've done great when it comes to uh, two things. I wanna say, well, the hardest thing for cops are two things. is riot control, you know, crowd control, and domestic violence is one of the hardest things the police can do. And now they're facing crowd control uh, to a point that they're trying to control the protesters, but then to control rioters. Like last night, the whole area was burning up. I I'm afraid that uh, after what happened to the two cops last night and what happened in Nevada, I'm afraid another a cop is going to get killed here in New York. And I, I pray that they're protected. But this is something that's real serious right now. Yeah. You know, speaking of, of, of the uh, police officer, uh, that was, uh, you know, that was attacked uh, in Las Vegas. Can you speak more? I know we talked about uh, what's going on in Las Vegas, uh, uh, Dr. Annette, but what, what, are the, what are the cops? Are they on high alert? Are they, you know, do they even want to work? So, you know, what, what's your opinion about that? I think they're being very cautious. Um, they're trying to disperse things before it becomes as bad as it is in New York, obviously. Um, our strip is, I mean, it's empty. Obviously, the, the casinos have their own security. So they're, they're trying to keep people off of their properties. But everybody's on alert. Um, they're trying to disperse people with tear gas whenever possible, if things get out of hand. Uh, during the first protest here, there were 12 Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department uh, police officers that were hurt. So I think that our sheriff has decided to do a little bit more aggressive uh, countermeasures. But still, I mean, there are never going to be enough police officers. Right, right. So what's, uh, Henry, what's going on? Uh, I hear a lot of noise in the background. What's going on in your, in your city right now? <laughs> right now, there's still the crowd is there with the politicians, people that are, now the congressman, I mean, the councilman is running, but you have a crowd of people here. Uh, I think people are just trying to give each other uh, support with these politicians. The politicians are speaking a good game, you know, it's a photo op for them. So right now they're trying because we know that it's about 15, 10 minutes to five uh, after 536 and it's close to curfew time here in the city. So, you know, it's going to start dispersing. All the news are here. I'm going to tell you there's a... Uh, I'm counting uh, one, two, three, four stations are here already, and they're preparing to go live themselves. Uh -huh. Oh, so uh, I guess Henry just uh, had some technical. Him. Yeah, we lost Henry, so sorry about that. Uh, but for those of you who are on Facebook, if you have any questions for Dr. Annette Tejero and the violence that she's seeing or, or witnessing or hearing about in Las Vegas, uh, you know, please, uh, please, uh, uh, you know, comment. Uh, we're trying to get Henry Rajon back from uh, New York. He is at a very, very, very hot spot uh, in that area. So, uh, Henry, sorry, Edwin, uh, I got not a problem. Yeah, we're 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 having we're having difficult difficulties here too. So, explain what's going on uh, again. Uh, yes. So right now the crowd is here. You got a couple of politicians that are candidates, including the councilman who's running for, uh, for Congress. Uh, the crowds are here trying to support each other. Uh, they, they, you know, the people are afraid, they're hurt, because this neighborhood has been rocked. The city has been rocked, the country has been rocked by all these riots. And right now, the leadership here in New York is very disappointing. They're not saying that they're, they're trying to balance it. They're trying to say they support the protesters, but they don't say that they are right now uh, giving support also to the police, because the people have to hear it from the leaders to say not all cops are bad. The ones that are in Minneapolis are going to be dealt with. But the one, like the two that, that got hurt last night, somebody's going to get killed if they continue like this. But the leadership is not stepping up. And you know what they're going to do, Edwin and uh -huh. Dr. Nett? If something happens, God forbid, to a cop, they're the first ones to be there at the funeral. And last time, 
I remember that all the cops turned their back on the mayor like twice on two different funerals because that's a way of showing disrespect and saying that they're against them. So I don't want to see another cop die. Three have died uh, over execution, and that's what they did. Yeah. Are, are you seeing the same? Yeah, you know, I don't know if you uh, walk around at night, uh, but you're, you're walking around during the daytime. Are you seeing the same faces uh, in the evening as you are in the morning? Not sure. That's a good question. I'm not sure because right now I'm not seeing uh, the faces. I don't see now. No, I'm not recognizing the pe people that I see now that are in the crowd right now are people that are not considered like rioters. They're more citizens here that live here. Uh, you know, people that are that live in the neighborhood and they're here. And then you know, I don't think I don't recognize. And they, I don't even see even the the profiling. And I don't like to profile, but if they don't look like the typical uh, young person rioter. That one. These people are not coming out yet. Those folks come out later on. But answering your question, no, I don't. I don't think I see any of those types yet. Yeah. Well, here's here's where I call BS on this whole. Uh, you know, protesters are different than than the rioters. Every city is saying that you know these the protesters are different than the rioters. That they're coming from outside the area. They're coming from other states. At what point, you know? How do you have all these people coming from different areas, you know, when, you know, it just doesn't add up, you know, like in Minnesota, they're saying people came in from, you know, from another state, they all say, they have to come from somewhere. And it's just, it's just confusing to me. Uh, you know, I think we're having a Dr. Jekyll, uh, you know, Mr. Hyde type of type of situation where it might be, it might be one person in the daytime who is perfectly fine, perfectly peaceful. And then once night comes around, that same person might change it to might morph onto something different. He might not look the same, but he's the same person. He just, you know, we're, we have a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. That, that's my opinion. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, I think what, that, what Mike said earlier is true. If they can prove that people are coming from other states and that's crossing state lines, now it's considered something federal and fe a felony on a federal level, and they should come after people. But even though the, lo the progressives here, the leadership are saying they know people, agitators are coming from other groups and they're coming not only in New York, but they're coming to all parts of the United States. They're aware of it. They, they don't want to use the word Antifa too. They don't want to say, oh no, that's not what we're, you know, they don't want to talk about it. But I hope that the federal authorities or everybody look into these people that are crossing state lines. Right, so here's a question in terms of uh, you know, Antifa. If somebody, you know, whether they are part of the violence or not, if they are uh, known as Antifa members and knowing that Antifa is now regarded as a terrorist organization, can they, can the government uh, detain a Antifa, known Antifa member, uh, w regardless of if he committed a crime or not? Well, the Antifa, they, they're just like anybody else. They have rights. So um, they have to prove that they are doing a criminal act to be charged like anybody. Everybody, uh, when it comes to uh, their rights, their constitutional rights. So they, they need proof. They need to reason by any reasonable doubt. They have to prove that this Antifa group or persons or person are committing an act. I'll give you an example. The two attorneys here in New York that are being charged by the federal government for throwing a cocktail uh, 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 item at one of the, the police cars. They were supposed to be facing murder charges, but now, attempted murder, but now all of a sudden they bumped it down to destroying property. That's at the local uh, uh, authorities here. But now the federal government, the U.S. Attorney's Office, wants to continue to pursue these two, so listen to this guys, two attorneys. Two attorneys were caught. Uh, one I think is African-American, the other one is a, a, a white woman, and they're both attorneys, and one is an Ivy League, attorney when I leave school and they're both being charged with all these things. Know what I mean? Right, 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 right. So w welcome back, Dr. Annette. Yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties. No, I was I'm wondering where's Dr. Annette? Yeah, I'm having technical difficulties all over the place. Uh, you know, my Facebook Live uh, ended. Uh, I don't know if it's because of my computer doesn't have the resources and, uh, you know, to, uh, to put all this stuff together, but... Um, I think a lot of people are online too. Right, right, right. Well, I, th I, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to figure out better technology. Uh, but anyway, we, we're coming on our five-minute warning here. Um, okay. 
So uh, final thoughts, what do you think we need to do? Uh, you know, or should, right now, should we still be vigilant and uh, question what's going on and hunker down and then find a solution or is it time for the, the solution now? Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people I'm seeing online, you know, their solution is to go even more massive protests, uh, do more massive disruption. Uh, you know, break more windows because windows can be replaced, items can be replaced, and uh, you know they're just trying to, to destroy everything that this country is about uh, for something new. Uh, is that the right way to do things? Want to let Dr. Nett go first? Violence is not the answer. Um, violence is going to get even more people hurt. We need to be able to trust our police departments. Uh, if we need to have people develop better relationships with them, that's a whole other animal. But our leadership, the people that we elect to represent us, are falling down on the job. And I think that's the most painful part of what's happening here, is we elect people so that they can find solutions, so that they can work on things in our community. And they're falling, they're falling far short. And... The victims are going to be not only police officers, but people who are going to get hurt by this behavior. And I'm not talking about just financially. You know, I'm talking about long term. People lose their businesses. If people lose their ability to pay for health care, for food, for shelter, we're going to have massive problems. Give me a water. And the government isn't going to come in and be able to help everybody 100% of the time because. To be honest with you, we fund the government. So if we're in crisis, government's even more crisis. Right. right. Henry? Yes, sir. So thank you so much. And again, um, if you want to, if people want to know, tomorrow we're supposed to go uh, uh, hot again, live again. We're going to have uh, Aja Smith, same time, uh, 1130 Pacific, 2.30 uh, my time here in, uh, in the East Coast. And she is a candidate running out of the 41st Congressional District. And uh, we're going to have her tomorrow. So let's see if we can bring this important uh, information to the public and letting them know that we are all professionals. Here in New York, guys, let's just pray for everybody in all the United States. I pray for you, Edwin. I pray for Dr. Ned in her area. Here in New York, we're expecting, uh, like I said, you know, they're going to have other riots. Hoping it's not the case, but this is what the pattern has been. If you follow the pattern, and hopefully, you know, they don't continue destroying my neighborhood. This is my neighborhood of 35 years. And apart from me uh, uh, reporting on it, it breaks my heart to see that. And I ask God to be with us. And I'm not ashamed to say I believe in God and Jesus Christ. So I'm hoping, I really, really pray that we are safe. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, hunkering down. We have no choice here. We, you know, in my area, I did hear a couple of young people, you know, after coming from the rioting. I'm pretty safe. I hope you're safe out there in Dr. Nett. And, uh, you know, we hope that God blesses Dr. I mean, uh, President Trump and the whole team. They're trying to do their best to maintain that this country doesn't go under. Right. Well said. Well said. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, we're going to wrap it up now. And, uh, you know, maybe our, our, our next discussions, uh, you know, in the next few days, we'll talk about more about solutions and, uh, you know, how to mend the hurt that America has and, um, you know, how do we fix this divide? I don't even know if it's a, a racial divide anymore. I, I think it's becoming uh, the new the new race is more of a political race, uh, you know, where conservatives against progressives against liberals. Um, I think uh, things are, are moving away from uh, the color of your skin to the color of your, of your politics. Uh, so I think uh, let's reserve that for the next discussion. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Nett. Uh, thank you, Henry. And everybody be safe. We will definitely see you very soon. Thanks again, guys, and keep, uh, keep following us.